that when this thing first hit the fan, and I, I don't think anyone was really, well, let me just say anyone. I know I wasn't taking this as serious until like the NBA started shutting, shutting down. Like when the <laughs> NBA shut down, I was like, okay, this is pretty serious, right? So COVID-19 is still going on and affecting nearly every single part of our life. And one of the questions that keeps coming up over and over and over is what does community look like and really what does church look like now that things are shut down? Obviously we can't go out into the community and bring people to our services on the weekend and so we are having to adapt. Seth, who's one of my pastor friends, is just one of thousands of people who are learning how to adapt on the fly and whose normal routine has been turned upside down. Oh man, that seems like so many years ago. Uh, <laughs> life was life was busy. Um, I live in Riverside, and so my church is in Orange County. So driving out of Orange County, 45 minute drive, depending on traffic, um, three four days a week. Um, also taking some classes at Claremont, so driving to Claremont, which is another 45 bit 45 um, minutes. So driving there. So definitely spent a lot of time on the highway. Um, and then just kind of, you know, ripping and running, visiting members, you know, don't really have an office, so I would go to a coffee shop and that would kind of be like my, 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 uh, my, my work study place where I'll go either write my sermons or work on projects. And so just definitely um, pre-corona, just being able to get out and to be mobile and to be free and to connect with people and um, just to, to really experience all of life. And so that has changed significantly in the last three weeks. You know that you're from the Los Angeles area when the first thing that you mentioned that has changed is your relationship to traffic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting, which interesting is that, you know, I looked at our, our budget finances for the last couple, couple for the last month, yeah. for March, and we've saved like $350, you know, just in gas. Just on gas alone. Um, just in gas alone. I was like, man, this is what it'd be like to have a Tesla. Right, so there you go. I'm trying to make I'm trying to make a case. <laughs> As a leader of community, Seth has noticed a few things changing around him. Before coronavirus, community happened naturally, almost without effort. But now it's taking a little bit more work. Uh, I think pre-corona, community just kind of naturally happened if people showed up to the building. Right, so our church is extremely laid back, super relaxed. You know, we just kind of have like lawn chairs out, you know, in a courtyard area. So after service, you know, people would just be hanging out, talking. You know, there's always some refreshments outside. And so people will just be kind of like chilling and just really connecting and, and community just kind of forms organically because you showed up to church. And so now post Corona, um, or while we're still in this Corona season, uh, we just have to be s that much more intentional on reaching out. Whereas before I'd be like, oh, I don't have to call her this week. I'll see her on Saturday, mm -hmm. right? Now it's like, no, we need to make sure that we call these people because I'm, I'm not gonna see you on Saturday and you may see me if you're watching online, but you're not, we're not gonna really be able to connect. Um, and so just trying to really leverage all of the platforms that are available to us um, and encourage our members to get on so that we can at least have some FaceTime and connect with them. Yeah, I find that super interesting that for you, the experience feels very different, but for your attendees or your church members, it might not actually feel very different at all. It might not be. Because right. I still see Pastor Seth on Saturday. Everything's cool, yep. but now he's calling me. Like, And so they might actually yep. feel more connected maybe. Is that possible to say? I think so. I mean, I've called a few people and they were kind of shocked that I called. <laughs> They're like, oh, wow. Like, what are they expecting to hear from you? You know? Um, and I was like, yeah, just calling to check on you. I mean, I know I have several members of my congregation who are kind of like entrepreneurs, independent contractors, and who as a result of kind of like the shelter in place, their business has slowed down. So just kind of call and see how they're doing financially, how they're doing spiritually, how their marriages are holding up. Whether it's right or wrong, finances is a, is a strong indicator of someone's spirituality, right? And so if someone's like, man, I'm just, kinda, I'm just kinda like stressed right now. Like, yeah, I lost my job, I'm doing this. So like, man, well, you know, how is that impacting your spiritual life? Like, are you able are you to spend time with God? Man, well, not really, because I'm just so worried about this, that, and the other. So obviously I'm not making them synonymous, but there is a large, there is a connection, right? Or some type of correlation between the financial stress someone might be experiencing and where they may feel themselves spiritually, you know, in relationship to their walk with God. And so a lot of times that's where I'll start. I'll call them and say, especially if it's someone who I know they're a contract worker, they don't have stable work, that type of thing. I'll say, man, how is business going for you? You know, how is your job? Well, I talked to an individual this week. He's like, man, I used to have seven or eight jobs a week. Now I'm down to one job a week. And I'm like, man, 
man, you know, how are you guys doing financially? Oh, well, you know, we're, we're okay. My wife is still working, but it's kind of tough. We're like, yeah, man, well, how was your prayer life? You know, and then we just kind of go into that. Like, have you been able to really connect? And just kind of get a sense and a pulse of where they are. It's not so much me trying to assess them, right, spiritually, as much as it is me trying to communicate that, hey, I'm in your corner, I'm praying for you. Um, and if there's anything I can do to help, you know, let me know, you know, and then let me, let me pray for you now. This is often what we expect from our religious leaders, to pray for us. But the question is, is what does prayer actually do? How does it help? Does prayer put food on the table or help you make next month's rent? Seth dives into this just a little bit more. At the end of the day, it's not so much about the, the, the tangible aid that you can provide that person as much as, as it is the emotional consideration and support that you are providing them. Right? And so, wow, pastor, you might not be able to write me a check to pay my rent this month, but to know that you're journeying with me emotionally through this, right? To me, that's the value. Now, obviously, if we can write a check to help people out, you know, yes, we need to do that. We don't wanna just be that church which is saying, I'll pray for you and then we have means to help, but we don't, right? And so we wanna be able to provide any type of tangible support and assistance that we can for those individuals who are in need. But aside from that, even if the person doesn't need tangible, like a, a blank check for us to help them, it's just there. I know I'm a part of a community that is coming along a side of me during this difficult time and is journeying with me so that I don't feel like I'm all alone. Like that is the value of a phone call, a text message, an email that says, wow, this person thought about me. This person's praying for me. This person is concerned about me. I mean, there are individuals in our church that when this thing first hit the fan, and I, I don't think anyone was really, well, let me just say anyone. I know I wasn't taking this as serious until like the NBA started shutting, shutting down. Like when the <laughs> NBA shut down, I was like, okay, this is pretty serious, right? Yeah. And so around that time when this thing really hit the fan and, and you know, the shelter in place orders started to come down, um, we started reaching out to our members. We sent them several surveys and just said, hey, you know, how much toilet paper do you have? Like we asked that question, like how much water do you have? You know, do you have enough? Do you have enough that you're willing to share, right? If there's a member who needs some, would you be willing to share? And so we were just really trying to get a pulse of our congregation to say, okay, kind of where are we as a church as it relates to some of the, the household items right, that, that we would need in order to, 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 to run our household. Uh, and so once we got that idea and then we found that there were, you know, not many, but there were a handful of people who did not have, like we were able to connect the dots. Like, well, hey, this person over here says they have extra, we told them, and we were able to connect the dots and, and really build community. I don't think it's gotten to that point, at least from our experience and within our context, where people are really struggling as it relates to water, as it relates to toilet paper, as it relates to food, right? Um, people haven't gotten that far. I know where people are struggling is they have family members and they have friends who have been affected by the coronavirus who are sick. They're not sure what the end result's gonna be. And so people are beginning to worry more along those lines, more so than around, I, don't, I only have one roll of toilet paper left, right? right. And, so, and so while yes, we, we are trying to be intentional about having not so much a stockpile of goods, but having connections with other people who have you know, extra goods so that if you're in a need, we can connect you to someone who can help you. Um, but it's more so just like, again, just coming alongside of these individuals, praying for them and being an emotional support as we're all trying to figure this thing out. If there's one thing that has remained the same since the very start of this pandemic, it's the collective experience. I think one of the major reasons why people are drawn to church is for community. This idea of doing life together with people from all walks of life. But what we're noticing is that this doesn't happen just on one day of the weekend. It's, it's happening every single day. And so this got Seth thinking, why are we placing so much emphasis on one day out of the week? And is there a way that we can actually broaden this experience of community and church to every other day. Pre-corona, I already felt as though the church was putting too much emphasis on the Saturday morning service, right? I felt that it's almost like Saturday morning has become our golden calf, yeah. where it becomes untouchable, it is our sacred cow. And I was really beginning to feel like, you know what, we need to figure out a way to decentralize. Where yes, we still have Saturday morning services gathering place, but we need to figure out a way to really de-emphasize the, the, the Saturday morning gathering and to, and to emphasize, prioritize the at-home kind of small group gatherings. Um, currently, I kind of felt like, 
you know, it's kind of 80-20, like the weight that the, the in-church gathering has versus like the at-home small group gatherings, like 80-20. And my staff and I, we were already thinking like, how can we mo start moving the scale? So rather it being 80-20, we start moving it to it's like, you know, it's kind of like 50-50 or maybe even 60-40 with the priority being on that small group gathering because that's where we recognize where discipleship really happens. And so this pre, this, this Corona um, virus season that we're in has really just kind of, you know, kind of exponentially fast tracked our process of trying to figure out how can we get people to be more focused on connecting in homes, connecting throughout the week, whether it's at a Starbucks or Panera or even digitally. And while yes, we still want you to come to church, church is not the, the goal. Yeah. The goal is connection, the goal is community. Seth has discovered that church doesn't have to be one thing. It doesn't even have to be on just one day of the week, nor does it have to be what it's always been. One thing is for sure, and it's that society's been bending over backwards, just constantly changing and breaking all of the norms. And so in a changing world where society is changing, the question is, well, why can't the church change too? I, I think, you know, for us, our church, we, it's really, a, like I said, it's a casual church, and so we have not, historically been as intentional. And I think for us, this has just kind of heightened us to how we really need to step up our game as it relates to being super intentional and deliberate about building this community. And community is gonna look different for everyone. All right, so for some people, they're gonna want the to, to, to not only be on the daily prayer calls, but they're gonna wanna be on the, the Zoom Bible study, they're gonna wanna be a part of the Zoom uh, life group that we have going on, and they're gonna show up on Saturday online and watch the service. Whereas someone else, they might say, hey, I'm just gonna touch, I'm just gonna have one touch point with you, right? I'm just gonna jump on and watch the service, and I'm good, right? And so community looks like something different for everyone, and so, at the same time, we're trying to not create a model where we force everyone to kind of fall in line with what we think community should be or should look like, but just create a plethora of options for individuals so that wherever you are in your own journey, wherever you are in your own walk and your own needs, you can have access to several touch points that will hopefully add value to your life. Just as there are so many different means and methods to connect, the reality is that there's different ways to do community. The church has been one way for us to do community building, but things happen, pandemics happen, and now we have to innovate. The church can meet different needs in different times on different days in different ways. But one thing that I'm hoping is that through all this, we've had a time to reflect on how we can do this better and how we can serve our communities with greater love and greater grace.